Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mission Media tutorial, we'll be taking a look at a great way to remove dust on the lens inside of the fusion part of Resolve. So this is something that you may encounter from time to time. You see we've got this little piece of dirt on the lens of this beautiful footage provided by a viewer named David. So thank you very much, David, for sending this. And I think this will be a pretty interesting tutorial. Now this is a technique that can work in uh, pretty much any application with a tracker and you know some sort of stabilization function. So basically what we're going to do is you see how as the camera moves, uh, though the dust occludes part of the image in previous frames, that part of the image, the information is there. So we're going to be able to offset the image in time and then overlay it on itself and then basically be able to get the information back and it'll look actually pretty good. So of course you need a moving camera to have this work. If you're on a tripod, it's not going to help you out very much. But if you're on a tripod, then clone stamping works pretty well and it'll be faster and easier anyway. So the first thing we'll do is throw down a tracker and we'll just track this guy real quick. So this doesn't need to be an amazing track because we're never going to see the track, but I'll just put this in some random place that seems okay. So there's one and here's another one and we'll track forward and that looks like it's doing fine. Yep. Those are some smooth curves. So I'll take it. And we'll just unlink our tracker from here. And we will drop down a mat control. And we'll pipe this in. And what we're going to do in the mat control is just cut out this little spot of dust here. So go into our polyline tool and just make a little cut out of this. And if you have a bunch of pieces of dirt on the lens, you can just mask out all of those. And the same thing will work through all of them, which is super nice. We'll, of course, change our polyline from effect mask to garbage mat. And if you don't have a better way of doing this, let me know, because I don't really love using the mat control for this, but it works. And we will go ahead and just feather out our little mask here a bit. It's a little bit nicer. And that should be good. So now you see we've got our dust cut out, but you know, the actual image doesn't look any better yet. So now the next thing that we'll do after we've got this cut out is we'll drop down a little stabilization. So we'll put in a transform node. And we'll right click on center, go to connect to tracker one, steady position. And if we view this guy, you can see we've got a really basic, simple sort of stabilization. So now you see instead of our dust staying still and the image moving, the image stays still and the dust moves. So that is pretty handy. So the next thing we'll do is pop down another transform and undo what we just did. So right click connect to tracker one, unsteady position. And we'll view this, and now you can see our image stays still again. So now, in between these two nodes is where the magic's going to happen. So like I said before, since the spot that our dust is occluding isn't occluded in other frames, what we will do is just drop down a little time speed node, and we'll change this delay to something like 5. And, you know, just for good measure, we'll drop down another one, Control c Control v and change this to something like 10 frames. And we can combine these together and put in our one with the correct time and make sure that is in the foreground. So you see the green is the foreground. So our correct time will be on top and then our modified times will be underneath. And we can pipe this guy into where we re-stabilize everything or re-unstabilize everything. And now as we play through, you can see wherever our dust was, it isn't there anymore. So bring up our double viewer just so we can sort of get a taste of what's going on. And we'll find, so our dust is over here. You see, it's not there. So just like that magic, we've removed the dust from the footage. And you can't tell at all, which is super duper nice. But since you have this set up already, if there are more pieces of dust, you can always go into your mat control and, you know, mask out whatever else you want to mask out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. This is a super handy trick to know how to do. Thank you again, David, for sending this and suggesting it. He had actually suggested to use the actual tool in the color page, but it's not as good for this particular thing. And this is just a timeless technique that you can use in basically any program forever because it always works. <laughs> So I learned this in After Effects years ago, and it applies here. So 
If you like this tutorial, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Check out mistymediacom slash products if you want cool stuff or if you just want to support the channel. We just put up a new stock footage pack of atmospheric elements, which are great for motion graphics, which I will be putting a few tutorials out about because it's so easy to just drop some stock footage into your mediocre animation and make it look way better, faster, and clients like stuff that looks better, faster, and cheaper. So also be sure to you know leave suggestions for stuff down in the comments below. Like I said, this one came from a viewer, so thank you very much, David. Very much appreciate it. Just make sure they're cool suggestions like this. I don't want any more orange teal suggestions. I'm sick of it. I've done three tutorials on orange teal. So once again, I've been Theo with Mister Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.